the love of mathematics. And honestly thinking, man, I don't think that, you know, other disciplines would be there if mathematics was not around because mathematics is the foundation of a lot of the disciplines. Like I don't think engineering would be alive if mathematics is not the foundation. I don't think physics would be alive if mathematics is not the foundation. I don't think, for instance, um, science in general would be alive if mathematics is not the foundation. So math is very much important and research in mathematics is actually very much important. Welcome, 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 welcome. Um, yeah, this is um, this is the student plug. You know, on this channel, we talk about everything that has to do with uh, student and career development. And uh, my name is Ben Mahudu. Um, and still at it, please make sure that you subscribe and like the video. I mean, the, the subscription and liking the video, it actually helps with the YouTube algorithm. So when you like and subscribe, the algorithm then recommends the video to other people. Uh, and other people then get to watch. Uh, so I would actually ask you to do that. That is if you like the content, by the way. Uh, it's not like you are out here trying to force people, you know, to to like the content, even if maybe they don't. So, um, so today I'm going to be talking about um, careers in mathematics uh, and also research in mathematics. And um, so... I'm, I'm doing mathematics. I've always done mathematics. Um, I work in mathematics. Um, I lecture mathematics. I'm a lecturer uh, of mathematics. So um, I did my undergrad in mathematical sciences. Um, I was majoring in pure maths and applied mathematics. And I did my honors in pure mathematics. And after that, I did my master's in Pure mathematics, and then I did. Oh, I'm 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 currently doing my PhD in mathematics. Um. So yeah, and and, and when I say mathematics, I mean pure mathematics because there's a difference between pure mathematics and applied mathematics. Maybe one day we'll actually have a video on this. So um, so like yeah, um, I'll get a lot of these questions, you know, uh, every time, and I think this video is long overdue, you know. So I'd get people who'd ask me to say, you're doing mathematics. What does it mean? Um, where are you going to work? You know, I think a lot of people, when you tell them that they're studying mathematics, they start to be worried to be like, hey, where are you going to work? <laughs> you know, I feel like people just feel like there is a lack of job opportunities in mathematics, which is a misconception. And that's why I feel like there's a lot of misinformation and misconception about careers in mathematics and Hence, perhaps this conversation that we're having here today. So um, one of the questions that I get from the students um, is to say, you know, they're doing pure maths, um, which is very abstract, by the way. Um, and they then ask the question to say, where will I, where will, where, when, where will I apply this in real life? They just don't see how the mess that they do, how it fits into corporate or how it fits into their careers and or their jobs prospects or the things that they are looking into. But, uh, you know, the truth is, you know, mathematics is everywhere, you know. But the thing about mathematics is that, you know, especially pure mathematics is that, you know, it 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 sharpens the way you think and the way you do things and it makes you innovative, it makes you creative, it makes you very analytical, very inquisitive, uh, very good quantitatively, of course, and also numerically, um, you know, and it gives you good problem-solving skills. So those kind of skills, all in all, can actually be very good for you in corporate, you know, or elsewhere, you know. But, you know, before we get into this, here are these guys, you know, these guys are working in corporate, and, you know, they have done pure mathematics. And listen to what they have to say about pure mathematics and corporate. Now, talking about the banks, because you are actually in the banking, banking sector or in the bank industry. And I'm sure oh. someone can ask to say, uh, you have done maths and you are in the banking sector. Um, oh. Like, what are you doing there? They, they can't connect the two. Like, what do mathematicians or what do 
people with a math background do in the banking sector or in the financial sector that is? I mean, in order for you to understand what a mathematician would do uh, at the banking sector, one needs to understand what's really mathematics. I mean, like how are mathematicians trained and what they're trained to do. Uh, I like to think of mathematicians as people who are trained to think rather than who are given ideas and who are given a, a bulk of knowledge. It's a matter of teaching one's brain how to think. So, in most of the, going through that rigorous training of uh, being taught how to think in mathematics, uh, proving theorems, uh, 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 spending most, most time in the abstract world where only you understand the problem that you are solving. So it becomes much more interesting when you, you come to, when you go to a uh, corporate, because in corporate, there are so many formulas uh, which have been used. And those formulas, most of them, they have so many assumptions, which uh, they are not really given. I mean, if you see, for example, the Black Scholes model, so one will say, we'll just see a formula which uh, a normal finance graduate will just see a formula in which he needs to uh, put certain parameters and is going to get this number and he knows the meaning of this number. So when the mathematician comes now, he doesn't see the formula. Now the mathematician has a brain to go to the assumptions and uh, stretch the formulas and also see other possibilities. I mean, uh, it was realized uh, in the late uh, 1980s that um, it's better now for the banks to go and take people who have a quantitative background and teach them uh, financial knowledge, then they can do well than someone who do uh, pure, uh, pure finance. Uh, uh, in, in the industry because there you, you tend to give more uh, more insights and that's what we do. You know, and, and that's very great. And, and I remember one student also once asked me this in class, um, in fact, and he was oh. like, I see all the maths and all that we're being taught here, but where are we going to use this? You know, am I mm -hmm. going to get into some company and they're like, yeah, solve for X, you know? And you are there, you know, factorizing or applying the quadratic equation and stuff like that. And I was like, no, we, we, we teach you how to think. We give you analytical skills. You know, we mm. give you problem solving skills, which are the skills that I think right now, especially because we're in the era of innovation, you know, and uh, mm. talking about even um, fourth industrial revolution coding and everything like that you never understand the code mm. until you understand the mess behind it of course <clears throat> depending on what mm. uh, language are you using and everything like, in fact i was even arguing with someone to say i think that mathematicians can actually make good entrepreneurs because they have already been instilled with a problem solving mind because math is also is always about problem solving you know because uh, mm. the question that i always get asked all the time when I tell people I'm doing math, it's always like, where are you going to work? And, and, and stuff like that. So let's look at, besides academia and teaching, where does, you know, opportunities lie for someone who has done mathematics um, or someone who has done mathematical sciences? I mean, uh, since I'm more into uh, the banking sector, I will... Uh, I'll, be, uh, I'll focus more on what I know. Uh, I mean, uh, if you, so you check the, uh, the most, uh, the, the high performing hedge fund in the world, uh, it's uh, headed by the guy called uh, Jim, Jim Simmons. And he's a mathematician. I mean, uh, as a mathematician, uh, uh, when you go to the, 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 the the financial theory uh, will tell you that there's no arbitrage in the market, that the markets are efficient. Uh, so there's no way that you can make a risk-free uh, profit uh, uh, by anything because like they assume that the knowledge is already there, everyone has equal knowledge in the world. Then they come this new school of thought of mathematicians who are coming to say that 
we can indeed find patterns in uh, in financial markets that we can exploit and make profit out of them. So, which means that now you have more uh, trading moving towards a uh, algorithmic uh, trading. I mean, like you can't really make an algorithm. An algorithm, uh, you have to think of a, a mathematical pattern or a, a form of a, or, or, or a formula that needs to follow in order for you uh, to program that algorithm. So that's when uh, mathematics are uh, going. And now, the one who also mentioned the, uh, with the rise of new passive investment strategies. I mean, the passive investment strategies is more uh, where uh, the funds are just following a certain index. I mean, there are some indexes which uh, use mathematical formulas, which uh, we just go to the data and apply those mathematical formulas to the data and analyze it and see and buy stocks according to such formulas. So it has been proven, I mean, uh, using the historical data that uh, those ETFs, uh, in fact, they, they, they perform well. I mean, even the hedge fund related by Jim Simmons, I mean, if you check it and if you read more about it, you will just realize that he just have uh, his own uh, mathematical uh, formula that is using equations that is using uh, to solve uh, the market. So it becomes uh, much more interesting uh, in that way. Also in risk management, I mean, uh, as a mathematician in risk management, you are able to see uh, other, uh, other variables, many variables that can really affect uh, the returns the, on the portfolio that you are managing. I mean, that's why most uh, mathematicians uh, they go to risk management, and some mathematicians, I mean, they go to pricing. I mean, uh, for actual trading to the uh, uh, in markets. I mean, uh, because like uh, if you are in if you are a mathematician, you are able to to uh, exploit different. Uh, a different situations uh, to your advantage because uh, you are in a world where uh, I mean, if you check topology, for instance, I mean, you you you, you tend to focus more into detail. Uh, you you tend to know people will argue that you know too much of small things, but uh, one will also argue that uh, if there is too much of small things, just means that. It was ignorance at the beginning. Those things which were which people thought it was small, it's not small anymore. Yeah. I understand what mathematics taught me in the sense of theory, ne? Sure. Uh, because we used to do a lot of proofs in, in maths, right? So sure, BAs sure. and all of that. We used to do yeah. a lot of proofs. I am not using none of those things i even now if you can tell me about med 3 i know nothing <laughs> because i have never used any of those things yeah but i can tell you this i still appreciate the ability uh, not maybe the ability but i i still appreciate what these theories allowed my brain to do because mm. if you look at it, Harriet's agility never sits a cream, man. Yeah, cream, but we are mine. But what we were actually not understanding is that we were teaching our mind to hold different scenarios of different things, right? Yeah. So, like, if if you look at the work that I do now, my before I do a report, ne, I have about. 12 to 13 spreadsheets or, or not spreadsheets but sheets right yeah. that i need to attend all of them and all of them are linked yeah so if one on on uh, the last one would speak to the first one which is where i input my data and everything right so i need to understand all of them and what they are saying to each other follow the pattern you we'll understand sure. and us cramming those theories and those proofs is the reason i'm able to hold those things and not crack yeah we'll understand 
Yeah. I was talking to Pidani. I had Pidani Tilibali um, yeah. on this platform, like I think some two weeks ago. Um, he yeah. has done a, a master's in mathematics. He's working for one of the, the banks. Um, there. Yeah. And so we're talking about what does a mathematician does in a bank. And the way he broke it down was very beautiful, actually. And he was talking yeah. about like uh, the, what has abstract maths. You know, of course, you don't get there and they're like proof, you know. Sure. But he was sure. telling me about how his mind is so analytic and so yes. like so like you you get into the details of details because pure math is your mind is it's all about mindset. Your mindset becomes yeah. locked into this way of thinking in a certain way whereby yes. you pay like so he was telling me about how he's working with these formulas and how he's extrapolating some of them and how he's actually coming up with all algorithms to actually yeah. track ETFs. And I was like, yes. this is beautiful, man. Yeah. yeah. It's, 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 it's exactly that, man. And it, it gives you the, the ability to absorb patterns quickly. Yeah. So maths gives you that. That's why the, the, the person you're mentioning would be able to pick up different algorithms and and work with them at the same point in time. It's because they understand the patterns, right? And if you follow through with the proofs and whatnot, those let uh, X greater than zero, you know, they were forming some sort of pattern and some sort of language that even though you're not using them, you are able to, 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 to get patterns easily and understand them and be very analytical, as, as, as the guy said. Like, it allows you that ability. I think from a technical point of view, you, I think just being an out-of-the-box thinker, I think being someone who's analytically minded, who has a logical thought process, um, and just thinks outside of the box. I think that is the most important sort of from the technical skills that you could actually have. Because at the end of the day, uh, a lot of the time, we, 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 we get work that we might not necessarily know how to do it, from us, be honest. And you have to figure it out. So, and there's always different challenges that come up. There's always something weird that comes up. And then you're like, okay, well, how do we do this? You have to go back to basics. So I think if you use someone who very comfortably can work things out from first principles to say, all right, this is where we start. This is how we go from step one to step two. And along each step of the way, make sure that you're accurate, you're correct. I think that is important. Yeah. And but at the same time, you can't be like a robot. You need some sort of creativity because solutions don't just come out of logical thought process. It's important to make sure that your solution is correct, but you also need to be able to think outside of the box. And I think that's what, you know, mathematics teaches you. I think a lot of people, um, you know, think mathematics is, um, how can I say, like very strict and structured and disciplined uh, type of uh, study, but it's actually very creative. Uh, I mean, I think you you would know a lot of the, the proofs that we go through, especially I think when you get to a postgraduate stage and start, you know, making your own proofs, you realize you've got to really think sometimes to, you know, to come up with a solution. Um, and I mean, that's why, you know, whether it's you studying math or stats or actuarial science or engineering, it doesn't really matter. As long as you've got that thought process to think logically and analytically and think outside the box, that is what we need. You know, so that is very great. You know, that's very great to hear. You know about about about, about that. So, um, yeah. So there's quite a lot of job opportunities for people who have done mathematics. Um, a lot of the the classmates that I had. Um, who we did Puma, we did Puma together. They are most of them. They're working in the banks, like you know, as quants. Um, uh, quant. I mean, being a quant is is, is 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 in fashion now. You know, I think it's one of the careers that is actually in fashion, especially in the banking industry. So, quantitative analysts they use a lot of mathematics, a lot of mathematical models and stuff like that. So, as a someone with a mathematics background or mathematics degree. You can actually go on and work as a quant, um, and you know some of the guys that I've studied with, they actually 
um, in analysis, you know, because maths give you an analytical skill, you know. So some of them, they are working as business analysts. Uh, some of them, they're working as investment analysts and stuff. So there's quite a huge scope that you can, you know, venture into, you know. And um, and what, what uh, where else? And also data sciences, really. You know, um, as a math graduate, you can also venture into data science, but you also have to, to do some coding and stuff like that and get into it. Because, you know, here's the thing is that when you graduate with a math, math degree, all you have is the maths, you know. But when you get into the corporate, they actually train you, you know, into their corporate work, you know, then your maths background still comes in handy in that regard. So that is that. So, you know, the other option is that you can actually be in academia, you know, you can be a lecturer, a researcher, or you can be a teacher if you want to. Uh, you know, I know people who have done mathematics, have a mathematics degree, and then they go on to do something called the PGCE. I don't know in other institutions what is it called, but a postgraduate certificate in education, which then qualifies you to teach, you know, so a lot of people I see they do that so that's something that you can also do um so 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 those are the things and um yeah so but the opportunities are quite you know huge I mean if you have a chance you know one thing that I used to do when I was um in undergrad I used to go on LinkedIn and go on the job search and just say mathematics you know so it you know it will give you like the jobs that their requirements is mathematics and it was quite a lot i was actually very shocked to be like wow you can do this you can do this you can do that so yeah so also in this channel i've had a lot of people who have actually studied mathematics who are you know out there you know you, these are the links that you see, see keep on coming on top of there so you must check them out and stuff so now um i do have some questions so i'm going to be talking also about um, research in mathematics, um, what does it entail and what is research in mathematics? Um, uh, but before I do that, I do have some questions from, uh, from the subscriber, subscribers. So there's a question here from Udo Ngongwane and he says, the question says, why did you choose to pursue a degree in maths? There's a very important question. The short story of it, man, is that I love maths. I have a very strong passion for maths. Um, from high school, man, I just loved maths. Uh, I remember in my high school, my teacher, who was our principal, Mr. Khalema, from Rewuni Secondary School, shout out. You know? um, he used to actually leave me with the class to teach the class because he was a principal. He was doing errands and stuff. And... I would teach them and it was nice, you know. Um, so I just loved mathematics from, from high school. And when I was doing my matric, I was like, I'm just going to do something in mathematics, you know. Um, at the time, actuarial science was still popping. You know, it was like the new kid on the block, you know, talking about actuarial science, that there is this course and stuff like that. So I applied to do actuarial science because in my matric, I got, I think, 98% in mathematics and 97 in physics and I uh, I enrolled for mathematics adverts and I did I, actually, I mean not enrolled for mathematics I enrolled for actual science and I did actual science um yeah so when I did my first day in actual science um I enjoyed the course actual science but also I was doing stats I failed stats and I had to repeat stats and also when you're doing actual science I had to do economics I had to do business accounting Mind do from high school, I was in the science stream and stuff. So those were kind of difficult for me. So, yeah, so I ended up repeating the stats, but then I changed, you know, because now I started understanding what actual science is all about, which is, it is actually very much more business oriented at the time. Um, and now I changed, I changed into applied maths and PUMATS. So I majored in uh, applied maths and PUMATS. That's how I got the degree in, in mathematical sciences. And yeah, the, the reason why I chose to do this, man, is just because I just love maths, you know. 
Um, at the time, even quite funny enough, I was not very interested in the careers. You know, I wasn't asking myself, so what am I going to do after this? I was just like, I want to study maths. Let me study maths, you know? <laughs> and that's what I did. So the other question is, does your career bring you fulfillment? Are you genuinely happy with the career path you've chosen? Definitely. I'm genuinely happy. I'm happy right now talking to you. <laughs> yeah, um, I'm, a, I'm a lecturer by profession. Um, I'm a lecturer. I lecture mathematics and uh, I lecture research and stuff. I love it, man. I love it, you know. I love it. You know, I think when I was doing my honors, um, which was um, in, I can't remember the year. That's how old I am. <laughs> I can't remember the year. But when I was doing my honors, you know, in my school, the School of Mathematics at Vets, the rule was that if you're doing honors, you have to be a tutor. It was compulsory at the time. And I became a tutor. And man, that was the most fulfilling time of my life. You know, going to class, meeting the students, helping them out, being a tutor. Man, I remember one day, I think it just clicked into my mind. I was like, you know what? I want to do this. I want to continue doing this forever, you know? Um, so, yeah. And, and and because when I was doing that, I started understanding how what is academia and how academia works and stuff like that. And, you know, I just also fell in love with academia because it just aligned with my principles. And, and you know, and I also wanted to do something that was fulfilling. And it just just made sense. So, so yeah, I, I, I really love my job. I really love what I do. I'm happy with what I do. Can exchange it at this moment. Um, the other question is, um, what would you expect to make as a researcher in the field of mathematics? So my I'm currently doing my PhD. The title of my PhD, let me see if I remember it. The title of my PhD is Comparative Analysis of Bonology in the Categories of Topology and Follicle Spaces. Hmm. I said a lot, right? <laughs> I said a lot. <laughs> yeah. So, but um, my area of research is um, mainly Follicle Spaces, um, but that also has to do with category theory that also has to do with topology and that has to do with bonology, you know? Um, so yeah. like that arcing, you know, um, that web, you know, so that's what I research on. And, you know, the interesting thing so far, you know, everything has been interesting, you know, research is interesting, you know, in itself, because with research, you're always finding new things and you're always finding new ways and, you know, it's just very interesting for me, especially if you're very inquisitive like myself and very curious like myself. When you do research, it's just like, wow, you know. So every day presents itself with new something new. You're like, oh, okay, you discover something. You're like, oh, you know, stuff like that, you know. But um, what has been quite interesting for me lately was, you know, the on bonologies, the, the, the concept of bonology that I was working on. Um, and, and, and how these bonologies, they, so we were investigating the relationship between the bonologies and finding out that their relationship actually coincide or is consistent with the relationship of the topologies from which they are induced from in the category of focus spaces. Hish, you see now, I don't want to get into the maths abstractness into it. I feel like I'm I'm getting into that, you know, uh, mathematically. So you know, but I don't want to get into that. But yeah, so that that was very much interesting because with maths you are researching, you know, things. That's where derivations come from. That's where um, new concept and new theorems come from. I always give the example about you know you know the 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 quadratic equation, right? minus b plus minus the square root of what, 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 and stuff. So that equation, people just use it, but somebody had to derive it, meaning someone has to sit down, come up with a research problem to say, how can I find the square roots of, um, I mean, not, yeah, how, how, how can I find the roots of a quadratic without actually 
factorizing it. And he had to think, he had to, you know, try this, try that, up until then he formulated or derived this equation. Um, and that's what research in mathematics actually entails. It's very beautiful, man, you know. And um, so that's what we do when we do research in mathematics. You know, one of my colleagues was telling me that actually they are working on using matrices as a way of storing data. You know, you know, I mean, big data is a big thing right now. So I was looking at that, I was like, wow, the power of mathematics, the love of mathematics. And honestly thinking, man, I don't think that, you know, other disciplines would be there if mathematics was not around. Because mathematics is the foundation of a lot of the disciplines. Like, I don't think engineering would be alive if mathematics is not the foundation. I don't think physics would be alive if mathematics is not the foundation. I don't think, for instance, um, science in general would be alive if mathematics is not the foundation. So maths is very much important and research in mathematics is actually very much important. So that is me doing a lot of PR for what I do. <laughs> or oh, for research in mathematics. So, yeah. So that is that. And uh, so, yeah, the, the, my research is in that. And, um, and, and, and there's category theory, man. Ooh, topology. Ooh, bonology. Frolica spaces. So, yeah. So if you're a student out there and you want a supervisor in that field, look at me now. Look at me now. <laughs> yeah. So that's what I that's what I research on. Um the other question is, and, and mind you, I also think that, you know, obviously if you are not going to cooperate, it's advisable that you do your honors. I think honors just gives you a good chance for you to go into cooperate because honors it gives you other skills. You know, when you're doing your honors, you're doing also research, you're doing coursework, there's pressure. You need the pressure for corporate as well. Um, and also there is, um, you do reports and stuff like that. So if you are going to corporate, it's advisable that you actually do your honors. So the other question is, um, what would you expect to make as a researcher in the field of mathematics? Is to research and to come up with new things and new ways of doing mathematics. You know, and that's the whole thing of a PhD, by the way. A PhD is you are doing research, but you are coming up with something new. You know, you must have a contribution, you know, which is different from, you know, undergrad. In undergrad, I feel like you are just learning to understand. But when you get to a PhD level, you already understand. So now you are coming up with, you are producing new knowledge, you yourself. You know, so, 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 so that is that. So, yeah, I, I think just to do more research in mathematics, but also just to, one thing that I'm also very passionate about is, is, is how, or is to look into the research into how we can improve our development in mathematics, especially in this country. Um, so because our mathematics at high school level is poor and stuff, but there are already people working on this and stuff. So it's something, it's something that is of interest to me, you know, how to learn mathematics, how to deliver mathematics, you know, because, you know, we, 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 mathematics is very much important for the advancement of society, especially in this era of, in the information age that we are in. So... The other question, my phone is being slow. The other question is, um, how was how has your journey been pursuing a degree in maths? Were things easy? Have you ever had to add a year to a degree? Of course, my journey was not easy. Yeah, at some point I had to, like I say, repeat. I have to repeat stats because I started off doing actuarial science, and then. Yeah, I repeated that. Um, so yeah, and which obviously added a year. And then into my whole entire degree and stuff. But yeah, I mean, you know, even in second year, third year, fourth year, you you fail a few tests there and there. You know, it doesn't mean that you're going to pass everything. There will be some assignment that maybe you didn't do well in it and stuff. So yeah, the, the journey is never smooth. Of course, I'm not saying that that is all there is. I know some people who have, you know, I mean, 
did everything record time passed everything and they've never failed everything you know it's possible as well but you know i remember when i was doing my honors there was a subject that was called craft theory you was a subject was stopping me you know <laughs> you and and then the, and the funny thing about it is that everyone was finding it easy you know and for me i think it was it was a twist because the things that people were finding them very difficult they were easy for me and the things that people were finding easy they were difficult for me so that subject people were just people at at my in my honors class they were just like they were finding it easy but for me it was just too difficult and i was yeah I, that one really gave me a hard time i think i i passed by my daughter's score you know <laughs> you know they 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 they, they call it my daughter's score my daughter's score is when you pass by like let's say uh 51 or 50 percent like you pass on the dot you know yeah then let me see if i didn't leave other questions what are some interesting things you're doing currently in your research on? I've done that. How is, okay, what would you expect to make as a research? I've done that. The other question is, um, lastly, um, at the beginning, did you know you were going to end up as a researcher and lecturer, or is it something you figured out throughout the journey? Yeah, obviously, like, just like with a lot of people, you know, a lot of people, especially people that we are from the rural areas or from the townships, black people, I must just put it like that. We are, let me not say everyone, or let me just not generalize here. Let me just say with me and the background that I come from and where I come from, where I come from, we are socialized to go to school, pass your matric, go to university, do well, graduate, get a job, and by getting a job, it means that you get a job in a company and you work for that company and then you retire and then that's life, you know? So even when I came to varsity, it was like that. It's like, okay, I'm going to get to varsity. I'm going to do my degree after that. I'm going to search for a job, get a job. And then from there, I'm working for this company. So academia was nowhere in that picture, you know? It was only when I was doing my honors because like I said, that in my honors, in my school, it was compulsory for you to be a tutor. So then when I started to be a tutor, I just started to understand how academia works, you know, and I fell in love because for me, academia was aligning with my principles as a person and, and some of my values as well, you know, so it was a no brainer really. And yeah, so that's how I got into this academic space and stuff. And and I think it's 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 a good thing. I think it's a good thing. I think what people don't realize is that academia is is, is the foundation of everything, man. You know, especially as far as the development of the society is concerned. I mean, if you look at the most developed countries, the education systems are the best. They're, they're, they're very good, even if they're not the best, but they are thriving or something like that. I mean, it still baffles me in this country that we don't really respect people in the education space that much. You know, I mean, teachers always, you know, are looked down upon. But I mean, if you're a student at varsity right now, you are here because a teacher played a role in you being here. You get what I'm saying? You, 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 you know, a teacher has to, you know, shape and everything and all of those type of things. The same with academia, you know. The development of a nation, I think, in my own accordance, is is if you have a good foundational structure and a good strong academia, then it's guaranteed you you cannot develop economically and in other aspects of society. You know, so for me, that's that's something that we need to think about, especially as young people, because as young people. We we because it, sometimes I see people who are very much they want to be they want to do research and lecturing but they are discouraged to get into it, you know. Uh, some they are discouraged because corporate looks glamorous and I guess people are chasing money, which I don't blame them, you know, because as black people we come from poverty backgrounds and stuff, so. Any opportunity for us to get out of that, we'll actually use it to our advantage. 
you know, stuff like that. So, so yeah, so that's how I got into academia myself. Uh, and yeah, uh, I've been loving it ever since. So I think those were all the questions, you know? So, um, yeah, so um, I think we need to talk more about this mathematics careers and stuff like that so surely i'll do other videos on this uh, maybe this is just a touch up nyana but we'll actually get more of this thank you very much for watching please like share and subscribe comment as well if you're doing mathematics and tell us how it's been your journey you know this is from me bye